Hello, I'm Mark Carnavale, your Cathedral City Council member. As you know, homelessness is a very important issue, not only nationwide, but to our city as well. In Cathedral City, the council, staff, and our police department have taken measured steps in outreach into the homeless community. It is our goal to provide information and resources to assist them in getting help with not only housing, but also social and mental health services, job training, placement, and medical care. I'm really excited to bring to you someone who has worked in this community for over 22 years, first as a patrolman and now as a sergeant in our police department. Please let me introduce to you Sergeant Nick Chapman. Hey Nick, how are you? I'm excellent. Thanks Good. for having Glad me. Glad to have you here. Now from what I understand, the chief had appointed you just recently to be in charge of this new program, correct? So about a year and a half ago, uh, the administration had the foresight to uh, create a homeless liaison program, recognizing the community issue that's at hand. Uh, it's an epidemic all over the state, not just in our city, but homelessness has really come to the forefront of the media uh, in everybody's lives. I mean, everybody's impacted by it right now. So uh, I've recently took over this unit as a supervisor uh, about three months ago. Okay. Uh, supervising one officer right now, this officer Dwayne Hodge, who's uh, made a tremendous impact in our city. And we're going to meet him pretty soon, right? So he'll come in here okay. and let him talk so you get it straight from the horse's mouth. Okay. You know, Nick, you go to a lot of places in town, a lot of markets and uh, shopping centers, and there's homeless out there panhandling. What is, what is a resident supposed to do when they're approached by a homelessness person and wants uh, to, uh, some money from you? What are you supposed to do? Well, Mark, I think that's an important question because that's probably the most common contact our citizens are going to have with homeless people other than driving by and seeing them. Um, as you know, um, being a business owner yourself, that uh, homeless people will frequently position themselves near the entrances to businesses mm -hmm. to catch people coming and going and asking for money or what have you. And uh, it creates problems for the business owners and it creates problems for the customers who feel intimidated often and they will go somewhere else where there's not this problem. So it's very important for us to go and contact these people uh, and convince them to go somewhere else to you know, solicit if, that, if that's what you want to call it. Um, some businesses actually have places set aside. I know uh, some of the other the big box places would have a place designated where either organizations or individuals could go solicit. Mm -hmm. They wanted to kind of minimize the impact on the entrance there. But um, probably the best advice I could give people is if you really want to help them, then you know maybe provide them with some fresh food or some beverages, some non-alcoholic beverages, if you really feel compelled to reach out and help them. Uh, a lot of our homeless have chemical dependency issues whether it be drugs or alcohol, and uh, even though people have the uh, good intentions of giving them money for some food or shelter, oftentimes these people, not always, but oftentimes, they will go out and spend it on drugs or alcohol. And that's the problem that we find with some of our, uh, some of our local homeless that have been here a long time that are chemical dependent, that the people that are trying to help them are actually hurting them. Nick, if you had the power to uh, benefit the homeless, what would you do? Well, I think, Mark, that probably the biggest problem we have throughout our particular state, which impacts our counties and cities as well, is the uh, funding for mental health uh, and for chemical dependency treatment has been drastically slashed over the years. Mm -hmm. Social workers, uh, there's, they have caseloads that are unmanageable, and the, the mentally ill that are on the street right now make up a huge, a huge uh, portion of them. So I think we need to get funding back into those, in those entities. Um, we definitely need mental health facilities that can treat these people, house them until they're treated and you know, uh, deemed fit to be released. And the same thing with chemical dependency. Um, you know, we have a very liberal outlook on, our, on uh, drugs and, and uh, controlled substances, marijuana use in our state, um, and some of this is the byproduct of that. Huh. So they need to take some of that money and funnel it back into treatment and rehab so that you know, we keep our citizens healthy. In addition to the police department, what other departments in the city work with you? Our public works department, who's headed by Deanna Presgrove, has done a phenomenal job assisting us with uh, cleanup in the city, uh, with the uh, debris from homeless camps, uh, discarded homeless camps, and all the other associated blight that uh, affects the city. A lot of that stuff uh, is, is uh, infectious and hazardous waste, including syringes and, and other items along those lines. Uh, We've been utilizing a, a contracted cleanup crew. Uh, once a week they meet with Officer Hodge and they go to pre-selected areas and do a thorough cleanup. And that's funded through a grant that our public uh, 
Public Works Department has obtained. Nick, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because I know you also do traffic too, right? You're traffic, and traffic and gangs. Traffic and gangs. So you're a busy man. I'm busy. But thank you so much for coming here today, taking time out and uh, informing us of what's going on with the homeless in the city. And I'm going to introduce next to you uh, Officer Dwayne Hodge, who's actually the boots on the ground here in Cathedral City. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Well, now we're really going to get into some more business here on the homeless. Sitting next to me is Officer Dwayne Hodge. And I want to thank you for coming in, Dwayne. Why don't you tell, pleasure, uh, tell the uh, people a little bit about your history here in uh, Cathedral City on the police department. I started with the police department in 99 as a reserve. I became a full-time officer in 2002. Uh, for about seven years, I was a canine officer. And then in December of 2016, uh, at that time, George Crum appointed me the homeless liaison position. What trends are you seeing in the homeless community? Is, is it rising? Is it uh, getting any better? The work that you've done, the important work that you've done, uh, have you seen a difference in the past couple of years since you've been doing this? We've seen a couple different segments actually go down, uh, which would be families, uh, military veterans, uh, women and children, as in our city, it's non-existent. However, we're seeing the drug addicted and the mentally ill rise sharply. What resources do you have to help the homeless? Shelter, medical care, food? What, what, what do you do when you encounter a homeless that really needs some help? Well, we're very fortunate. We have been able to partner up with the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission. Uh, they come out here on a weekly basis, on every Wednesday, or I'm sorry, every Thursday, and they have somebody out here for eight hours. So if we can determine who needs food, who needs shelter, who needs assistance, they will help with that. They also, in the summer, they do a program called 90 Days of Summer. They will come out, they will actually take the people back to their shelter for a day to cool off, have a shower, have a meal, and then bring them back at nighttime hours if they so choose. Now, I understand there's a Project Reunite. Could you explain a little bit about that program? Okay, Project Reunite was enacted about a year and a half ago. We received funds from tribal organizations as a gift. And was that the Agua Caliente? Yes, it great, was. Great, great. We take these funds and we set them aside. They are for the homeless people that want to be reunited with their families, whether it's in California, Cathedral City, or out of state. The money set aside, we use for bus tickets. We do not get personally involved as a city. We take the person to CVRM. The person goes through a rigorous question and answer session with CVRM. CVRM verifies all that information calls the person at the other end, makes sure that they're going to have housing, food, all, all their basic needs met. They fill out the paperwork. Once that's done, I respond to CVRM. We buy the ticket and they are on the bus. So it's just not sending them to another city and that would be their problem. They actually have residents there and they're all checked out. Good Absolutely. We don't want that Very done good. to us and we will not Very do that good. to anybody else. Dwayne, if you know a family that's on the verge of homelessness, what resources do you have before it gets to that, that, that devastating homelessness? Well, if they contact us, we can obviously go through county, state, find any funding that they may not know that they have. We can do that through CVRM. Anise Smith works over there in housing. We can actually set them up with a food box from CVRM also. I've seen it where CVRM comes out to a family that's in need. They'll drop off food boxes. That's one less thing on their plate that they have to worry about. Also, through Anise, we can see if they are available for any low-income electric bills, water, or anything like that. Uh, Sergeant Chapman touched a little bit on public works. Uh, I got your back helping you clean up encampments, which is really exciting because I've seen a lot of blight areas out there. Can you tell us how long you've been cleaning up these blight areas and uh, what it details how it works? It's been over the last five weeks and we've been very fortunate. They uh, contracted with a crew that really knows what they're doing. Uh, they do it quickly. They have a four-wheel drive to get out to the camps that are inaccessible otherwise. Uh, over the last five weeks, we've probably taken upwards of 15 truckloads of garbage encampment refuge, if you will, uh, to public works, at which time they dispose of it. And today, you, you saw an example of a truckload of items coming in. That was less than an hour and 15 minutes worth of work for them. That's how important it is for us to clean up a camp and stay on top of it. Later today, I'll be going to a camp that we've already had to clean up once. However, some recidivism has came back into the camp. A lot less, it's not going to be an entire day cleanup. However, it's going to take an hour or so. 
Okay. Now, you know, to us it looks blight and looks like junk, but I know you're respectful to the homeless. Are they warned? Are they told about the cleanup that's going to be happening? Yes, depending on where they're at. If they're on private property, the, the owner has the right to have them removed right then and there with their property. However, if it's on a city, public, state, or any other type of property, we give them 72 hours. Okay. I will even go to the extent of giving them boxes to pack up their stuff, uh, ask them where they want it to be moved to, ask them what they want to get rid of, to, to set it aside, just like trash day. Hey, put the stuff you don't want over here and we'll take care of it. Get this stuff and move it along that you do want. Okay. Now what if a homeless person uh, breaks the law and, uh, and they have to go to jail? What happens to their uh, uh, what basket full of uh, contents? Uh, we, do we keep that in a storage? Yes, we do. We're limited. And again, uh, along with the sergeant and uh, other administrators at the police department, they've allowed us to have an outside storage. Uh, it, go, it gets placed into a container. They're advised of the fact that we have their property. You are going to jail. The, the jail system will not take the property. Here's where it's going to be. You have 90 days to pick it up. Okay. Dwayne, over the five weeks of these uh, encampment cleanups, do you have any examples or any pictures of uh, those before and after? Yes, we've had uh, several success stories in the cleanups over the last five weeks. We had a, a large encampment just west of Palm Springs Motors. That was about two to three truckloads. Also, there was one below, or I should say above, Volkswagen dealership. That was two to three loads also. We've had them under the bridge near Denny's, and those have all been cleaned up. Also, underneath the Bankside Bridge, next to the Quick Quack Car Wash, okay. we took five truckloads of transient camp, for lack of a better term, out of there. And two people were moved along. They refused services. Obviously, underneath the bridge, it uh, uh, gives a lot of uh, shelter, but is there any uh, danger issues in uh, encampments underneath bridges? Absolutely, Mark. You've lived here a long time. I've lived here 52 years. I can't count the number of times that those have flash flooded through there. Nobody would survive if a flash flood went through there. Uh, it, it, it presents huge dangers. Uh, also, some of the times, if they do try to block up the water, or even if they're not trying to, and their structure keeps the water from flowing through there, it's going to back up downstream and downstream it may jump the wash and go into the neighborhoods. And okay. this is not to mention the pollutants that would be washed downstream. You have human waste, you have drug syringes like Sergeant Chapman spoke of, you have food spoiled, and large amount of other sharp objects that are gonna go right into the water system. You know, the heat's coming right now and it's gonna get pretty hot out there. Does the uh, homeless, uh, it, it, is it lesser during the uh, summertime or do they just find more shade or do we have any cooling centers that can help them out? What do we offer? Well, we do offer cooling centers. We have the Senior Center and we also have PATH, not PATH of Life, but the PATH up in North Palm Springs. Okay. Uh, there is, like I mentioned, CVRM has a cooling center that they actually come out and they will transport you out there if you want. Okay. And, and spend the day, cool off, get a shower, like I said, and come out, out and about. Homelessness is a, a very important issue and, it, and it, all through the city. If somebody sees a homeless camp being built, what should they do? The best reporting mechanism for reporting a camp to me is my citywide email address, which will be put at the bottom of the screen here. Snap a quick picture of it, quick scenario, where it was, when you saw it. I will be glad to get back to you. I'll let you know if it's been cleaned up, if whatever progress we have on it, or if we've had to contact the property owner to get it cleaned up. Dwayne, thank you so much for taking time out today, come in here, enlighten us all what's going on in Cathedral City, and uh, thank My you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Mark Carnavalli, your Cathedral City Council member. Thank you so much for watching. Anytime anybody want to call, 760-413-8339. Have a great day.